Did you know that a new mainline Atelier game came out this year? No? Well, I wouldn't blame you, because the fanfare surrounding the Western release of Atelier Vesdiana, Forgotten Alchemy and the Polar Knight was so muted, you'd be forgiven in thinking that they were ashamed to share it. And I suspect it's because Kui Tecmo knew that this game wasn't going to light up any awards. Now, when you look at these trailers from back when the game was first announced last year, it looked excellent. A new Atelier game, a new protagonist, everything looked hunky-dory for about three minutes. Because at the end of that trailer, the bombshell was thrown down. That this game, this new mainline game as they advertised it, was going to be a free-to-play live service gacha. A new title on mobile and PC with in-game purchases and currency. Needless to say, the news dropped like a lead balloon for some sections of the audience, including me. I wasn't too impressed with the news, but I was willing to give it a chance when it got the inevitable Western release. Gacha titles are not for me at all, but for Atelier, I was willing to at least try and see past that. So I did. I gave it five hours. And it just confirmed to me that this type of format will never be my cup of tea. At the end of the day, it's just a by-the-numbers gacha with an Atelier skin, nothing more than that. More currencies than an investment bank? Check. Visual diarrhea UI? Check. Referral codes you spam on Reddit? Check. Monotonous gameplay designed to make you pay? Check, check, and check. If you can't tell, I couldn't stand it. But if you're curious, then, well, have a listen and make your own judgement. I will also say now that out of principle, I didn't spend a penny on this game. I wanted to see how far I could get before it started to show its true colours. Initially, the platform I used was PC via Steam, and it's worth mentioning that as far as I could see, there was no controller support. It's all mouse-based. That might already be expected, considering it is primarily a mobile release, but it's worth mentioning. I'll also say as well that, as some live service games do, you'll have to take a chunky content patch before you even start, so enjoy seeing the looping opening sequence while it downloads. Anyway, this game takes place in Lantana, a land that once prospered through alchemy over a century prior, but due to a celestial event, the people have since forgotten of its existence. However, the power of alchemy still remains within the land, and the game's protagonist, Reziana, is an apprentice who seeks to spread the word of alchemy to the world once more. To do this, she has to go to the world's end to find the answers she seeks, not the pub. It's a simple enough premise, though I will give credit where it's due. The actual cutscenes and character models look brilliant. The animations and overall designs are very pleasing to look at, and there's no doubt both Gust and Akatsuki games went above and beyond for this aspect. The cutscenes do get noticeably worse following the prologue, but these pre-rendered sequences are well done, and probably the best the series has seen yet. It's great to see many of the older protags given this updated look too. It allows fans of the series to see their favourite characters in a new light, so props to them for that. In addition, I like that many of the characters have memorable traits replicates in this game, like Rorona and her love of pie. It's a nice callback and plays on the unique traits of the various heroines and heroes of Atelier as a series. Though can I also ask, is there some lore that requires Cordelia's guns to be replaced with knives? Now I gave a little spoiler there, but yes, there are a lot of returning characters in this game. Pro tags, side characters, you name it, they're here. And they knew what they were doing, because within five minutes of the game starting, Atelier's poster girl, Riser, appears on screen. They are actively trying to hook you in with Riser bait, and there's a butt flash for good measure. All the stops are pulled out, convenient camera shots, more fan favourites appearing, they're evidently doing all they can to keep you invested, and I will say, in seriousness, the prologue does a good job there. It was enjoyable seeing the return of familiar faces, so yeah, I guess they got me too, for the first hour at least. So it's all well and good for the returning cast, but what about our new lead, Reziana herself? Well, I like her. She's spirited, a massive fangirl of the other alchemists, and she's got that undoubted atelier charm that many of the protags have. She was such a highlight that she ended up as one of my many regrets over my five-hour session, in that Reziana deserves a traditional game and not this. Anyway, the prologue is going to demonstrate something else as well, that there are a lot of cutscenes in this game. You'd be forgiven in thinking that it's a visual novel of some description, but in this case, that's okay, because it keeps you away from the gameplay for extended periods. If you were exposed to said gameplay for too long, you'll quickly realise how bland and uninspired it is. 
As said before, the game was developed primarily by Gus and Akatsuki Games with the assistance of Team Ninja. But there's no doubt who has taken the most influence here. I don't have personal reference, so I'm going off what more informed people have said themselves, but Resdiana plays like many of the other gachas developed by Akatsuki Games. Outside of its outward appearance, the gameplay draws more from Akatsuki than it does Gus themselves. For instance, there is no movements nor exploration in this game. You have this home screen UI which is basically your central hub for everything displaying all your different currencies and progress in the story. It's where you can enter the atelier, kit out your characters, claim achievement rewards and yes, check out the gacha system. In this game they're called Wishes and you spend in-game currency called Lodestar Gems to take a shot at the wheel. For the initial launch events there were special bundles available to get stocks of 10 wishes at once but one thing stood out to me very quickly. While I got some good pulls like Escher and Loggy, I also got a hell of a lot of duplicates too. The gacha rate seemed to be pretty harsh here, I thought it was broken. But it's all by design. Everything in the game is designed to push you to this system to eventually grind you down enough that you feel compelled to take out your wallet. And the logic goes that the longer it takes you to get what you want, the more you're going to spend. For example, the characters you get all have various modes of customization attached to them. There are growth boards where you can raise their max level and increase stats, awakenings that require character specific shards that increase their star rank, and also equipment management split into four slots. Weapon, armor, accessory, and also a new addition called a memoria, which are art cards from the game that can be upgraded and come in various rarities, kind of like Adventure of Die last year. The first three are generally created via alchemy, while the last one is found either through completing certain achievements or part participating in the gacha roulette. Take a guess which one is the most important. As for the alchemy, it's got an interesting idea there, but once again, it has a clear purpose. You have to use mana initially to even do a synthesis, and it's limited per day. But when you do get involved, you just need to choose the recipe and then pick a team of characters to make it. Each character has a color affinity and some traits assigned to them. The idea is to match the color of the character to the recipe and then link them together to get traits on the item. Needless to say, the more characters you have, the more options that will open up to you. Now when you've kitted them out, you can take these characters with you to assist you in your various excursions. While there is no exploration, gathering does exist, but it's done via this on-rails dungeon section where you simply swipe right, click on the nodes, and fight unavoidable enemies. The combat is a turn-based system with turn order displayed at the bottom left. You have a max of five characters and each member has a class specialty. Breakers, for example, can deal much more damage to an enemy's stun gauge and break their posture easier. Every character also has three abilities, a minor attack that acts as a buff, a heavy hitting move, and finally a burst ability which can only be used when you fall on a burst slot from the timeline. You can also use assigned items by accessing this option on the left when the gauge is full. The whole idea of the combat is to attempt to get your characters on the burst and buff segments and prevent the enemy from doing the same. One main problem, it's boring as hell. It's the thinnest veil of strategy in terms of what items you use, how you affect turn order, and what members you have in the party, but you quickly realise what is happening. The enemies will get noticeably stronger within the first couple of hours, and battles can sometimes drag on for far longer than they should, upwards of five minutes at a time. Worse, the game has a habit of forcing you into consecutive battles, either through story sequences or in the dungeons, and as these enemies get stronger, you will realise something else. You can level up, synthesize, and awaken these members all you want, but the simple case it comes down to is that the higher ranked characters are just better in every way, and you know how we get those. In fact, progression in this game would make a snail look like Sonic the Hedgehog on crack. The achievement rewards and the missions you complete will all give you minimal amounts of currency, little tidbits to give you that sense of progression, but also sticking that bugbear in your mind that there's a faster method too. It is monotonous and slow with intention. Now I get it, this is a free game so they need to make money somewhere, but do they really have to be this blatant about it? Check out this advert from their official TikTok. この子うん。
回したのに何も出なかったんだけどちょっとレッサーが出るまでもガチャ回すわ財布出して財布財布あ、財布財布出して財布出して早く It's all in Japanese, but I'll weigh in to tell you what's happening. This lady is playing Lesdiana and has pulled a one star character. With this first person perspective, which is clearly us, we, in our wisdom, tell her that she's an idiot. Who plays with one star characters? Are you some sort of casual? Then, bring out the world's smallest violin as she laments that she wants to roll on the gacha but hasn't got any money. Oh, the tragedy. Like a moron, I mean Chad, we swoop in to save the damsel and give her some dosh, but oh no! She rolled on it ten times but didn't get shit. And now she wants more money cause she's gone gacha mad. Give me your wallet, SAIFU WO DASHTE! In all seriousness, this is very accurate. Pretty much tells you everything you need to know. The pull rates are so crap that you'll need to spend copious amounts to get that shiny SSR. Even more so than in other gachas. I'm not joking. This was a real advertisement greenlit by the game's management. They thought people would love it. The actual result? It ended with the official TikTok account for Reziana being deleted because it pissed off the majority of the player base. And it did the same to me. I knew what was going on. I expected the game to be like this. Heck, even as far as gachas go, this feels outdated in design. But I gave it a chance out of love for the series as a whole, and it was free, so I didn't lose anything but my time. Don't get me wrong, if you enjoy gachas, then cool. Defend it, enjoy it. I've got no issue with what other people like in gaming, we're all different. For me though, with a couple of exceptions, these types of games will never be anything more than something you whip out on the john while you're trying to relieve a log between your cheeks. Gameplay that is so monotonous and dull, preying on your most basic instinct to make things go quicker. And the most frustrating thing to me is that it has stuff in there that could have been an awesome traditional Atelier game. It looks great. The all-star feature of bringing in other characters could be like a Fire Emblem engage moment for Atelier. Reziana herself is a joy and the story, while basic, has at least the potential to be engaging. The only potential shown here, though, is wasted potential. Wrapping it up, well, I hope this isn't the future of the series. I'm just going to convince myself that this is a stopgap for Gust as they need in more time for the next mainline entry, and I'll just leave it there. Either way, there are way too many top-tier JRPGs coming out this year, and as such, I won't be wasting any more time on this. Oh, and do yourself a favour. If you want to get into the Atelier series and you're looking for your first game, don't start here just because it's free. Start with any of the other games, this one is better off forgotten. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe for more JRPG content and consider joining my Patreon if you're interested. Peace.